Hey guys, Akil Mohideen here and welcome back to another video. So today we're continuing on with the CPU project and it's going to be a little bit of a shorter video. And so basically what I've done here is that we had this programming function from before where we could select between either programming the computer ourselves or letting the computer select its own values for memory address. Well now we need the same function for the data part. So we need to be either, either be able to select the data ourselves using the step switch right here or we need the computer to be able to select the data itself to input the data into the RAM itself because obviously say we do a function like A plus B equals C well we need to input A and B ourselves using this dip switch and these memory addresses but when the uh, computer calculates the value for C and wants to store it in memory it's going to have to put that value into memory itself and it's going to need to know what the value of C is to put into memory so it's need to, going to need to be able to put in values um, for itself. So that's what we've built right here and it's exactly the same as this function right here so if you don't know exactly how this is built then go ahead and watch the last video the last CPU project video and you'll learn about that um, here we've just expanded this because remember this right here was a select circuit a two to one line selector for four bits here's a two to one line selector for eight bits now so we just took two of the four bits and doubled it so this is all we have right here and right now all we need to do is remember this eighth bit right here on this dip switch was the programming function so when it was turned up we're in programming mode um, now here we only have eight switches right here which means that um, um, we don't have an actual switch to select from programming mode but um, we don't need one because think about this if you're going to be programming the memory address then you're going to need to be programming the data itself too so you only need one programming switch so we're just going to connect this eighth bit here to this bit right here I mean to this select line so this is our select line right here this is our program select line right here um, so we're just going to connect it from here to here essentially so we've connected power together right here and we've also connected this line the um, select line for programming um, also to the same select line for programming on this chip here so now we're in a programming mode so we should be able to edit this so if we put this together yeah we can see their changes are being reflected right here oh and one thing um, this is a 10-bit array of LEDs so it is the first four are here take a break of two and then the last four bits are here so that if that makes any sense to why there's two stops right there so just you can set a few of these here we go just like this and as you can see this is working and the top module is still working um, as well just as expected so I think that pretty much wraps up for this video like I told you it is a short video in the next video I think we're gonna go ahead and move on with the instruction register um, because although we've moved on from the topic of registers instruction register kinda is the part where everything starts to kind of meld together more and that's gonna make it a little bit harder for conceptually because we haven't gone over exactly the architecture of the CPU and to understand such a fundamental part to the architecture is going to be difficult so it's gonna be a little bit more of a um, just trust me on this we need an instruction register you'll understand why and we'll get to see that in the next video so please like subscribe if you're interested in the series um, give it a thumbs up other than that, I will catch you guys later.